welcome back to my channel beautiful minutia if you're new here my name is tiffany and today i am doing a little book shopping i know it wasn't that long ago that i actually posted like a book shopping vlog but we kind of spur of the moment decided that we are gonna go to mckay's used bookstore which is one of our favorites it's like a two-story used bookstore and i have a couple of books that i have been looking for that i need for buddy reads <laughs> that are coming up. So one of those is Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope and the other is Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. And I'm looking for both of those and every time I've been to McKay's they have multiple copies of Fathers and Sons and lots of Trollope. And when I went to have price books, they didn't have either of the books that I was looking for. So I'm still kind of like on the hunt for those and that is part of my motivation for going today. Also, I have been decluttering and I have over 30 books to get rid of. So I'm gonna take them to McKay's, see if I can get some store credit, see if I can find the books that I'm looking for. Will I come home with other books? Quite possibly, because that's just the nature of McKay's, but I thought it would be really fun to take you along with us. I was hoping to record this haul when I got home from book shopping, but alas, the light was waning and the light in here is not great. So we are here. It is the next day and I actually have also gotten a new phone last night. <laughs> so the quality of these videos might actually be slightly different. I'm not really sure. So we'll end up seeing with all of that. So I ended up bringing all those books like I showed. They took some of them, but not all of them. They actually gave me like 17 of them back that they wouldn't be able to sell. And so I still have some of those, but they took enough of them that they actually give me around $30 worth of store credit, which is amazing. And it's way more than half price books gave me. It's like, I always forget how much more superior McKay's is to half price books, but that's okay. So anyways, I do have one book to share first, actually, that I got in my library because we stopped there on the way there because I had some holds to pick up. And I always peruse their little used book section because they sell books there for a quarter. And I came across this lovely, lovely edition of Plutarch's Lives. It's like super old. It's beautiful, beautiful. It has illustrations. And it was published in 1883. 
and I got it for a quarter. So that's really exciting. So uh, other than that, I will dive into my McKay's haul here and I will have this divided up into sections. So you can skip around in the timestamps if you want to, if there's a particular genre that you're more interested in seeing. I guess we'll start with classics. Classics is definitely what I have the most of, which I'm sure is not surprising to most of you, but I do also have some nonfiction, some historical fiction, some middle grade, and one miscellaneous thing. You know, I'm gonna share the miscellaneous thing first, I think. <laughs> it's just kind of like this magazine. It's a BTS magazine. My daughter was like so excited when we found it. And so it has just different pictures of them performing and Korean stuff in the back and like, fun facts and like all kinds of stuff. It's about four years old. So, I mean, some of the information is outdated, but it's still super fun. Okay, now for the classics. So, out of all the books that I was looking for when I went, the only one that I found was Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. So, I did find it. This is on my list of classics to read this year. So, they always have tons of editions of this there, so I was, was not surprised at all that I found one, but I was really disappointed that I did not find Barchester Towers. But on the way home, I did find out that it is on Project Gutenberg, so I can still get a free ebook version of it <laughs> to read for my buddy read for that next month. And then I have some other Russian books that are really cool, some of which I've heard of, some of which I have not. And the one that I have heard of is Nikolai Chernyshkevsky's what is to be done. And so this is a book that was written and then my understanding from the research that I've done is that Fathers and Sons was written in response to this book and then Demons was kind of written in response to Fathers and Sons. So I'm kind of doing it backwards by reading Demons and then I'll be reading Fathers and Sons probably this summer or this fall. And then I don't know when I'm gonna read this one, but I'm gonna to have to read this one shortly after so I can kind of piece them together and my memory is not too lacking. Hello, editing Tiffany here. I realized as I was watching this back that I kind of had the order of that wrong. So Fathers and Sons, I think was written first and then What Is To Be Done was written in response to Fathers and Sons. And then Demons was written in response kind of to both, but was definitely like making fun of what is to be done. Although it also makes fun of Turgenev quite a bit as well. So I just wanted to throw that little aside in there that I kind of got it mixed up while I was recording. So anyways, back to the haul. I also found a book that I had never heard of the author or the book before, and that is Ivan Goncharov's Oblo Ob Oblomov. Oblomov. The reason I ended up getting this is I read the back and it says, Oblomov lies in bed pondering one vital earth shattering question. Should he get up? Thus we meet one of the greatest creatures in all Russian literature. Oblomov, good natured and indolent with the mind of a reasonable man and the ambitions of a giant sloth. <laughs> and I read that and I'm like, I have to get this. It was like a buck 50. So no harm trying it out, but I was really, <laughs> I'm really excited to read this one. I think just based on the description on the back that it's probably gonna be quite humorous. So like I mentioned, I did not find Barchester Towers, but I did find Framley Parsonage by Anthony Trollope. And this is the only Trollope that they had that I didn't own. They had like multiple editions of Can You Forgive Her and The Way We Live Now, both of which I own, but I don't own this one. And I'm thinking I could be wrong, but I'm thinking this is part of the Barsetshire Chronicles. I didn't research that before I started filming this video, so maybe it's not, but I was thinking maybe it was book four, but I, I could be wrong. Either way, it's a trollop. I also got this tiny little book of Mark Twain short stories, The Celebrated Jumping Frog and other stories. And the other stories in there are the story of the bad little boy, is he living or is he dead? The man that corrupted Hadleyburg and a fable. And it was only 90 cents. And Mark Twain's writing is hilarious to me oftentimes. So just the celebrated jumping frog, my daughter saw that and she's like, you have to get that. That sounds so funny. I also found this edition of Charles Dickens Christmas books. And I have his A Christmas Carol, obviously, and it's in a really cruddy edition and I don't like it. And I really like this edition here. And it not only has A Christmas Carol, but it also has Cricket on the Hearth, which I have read, but I actually got rid of my short story collection that had that in it. Because while I 
liked it. I didn't really love it and I didn't like at all the other stories in it, but it also has the chimes, the battle of life in the haunted man. And I haven't read any of those three. I don't think it's a much nicer edition. I love the spine. It's awesome. So I am really happy I found this. I also found several Jules Verne. So one of them is Around the World in 80 Days, which I actually have not read. I had an edition of it when I was a kid and just couldn't get through it. I was actually really bored with it, but I was like 10. So <laughs> I do want to give it another chance. My husband actually loves 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So I think there's a chance that he would read these even if I wouldn't. And then the other one is The Mysterious Island, which I feel like I should have heard of but I haven't. So to Jules Verne. Then I also found The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky and Space read this book last year and really, really loved it. But there is another book in here too, Love in a Cold Climate, which I don't know if that's a sequel or just another Nancy Mitford book. But for $1.50, I could not pass that up. I was not necessarily planning on buying another edition of Heart of Darkness because I do have one and I held it up in my February TBR. It is my Patreon read for this month. But the issue was we were talking about it on our live that we had because we did a live for January to just talk about our favorite books and then we're doing group reads every other month. So that way it's not too overwhelming. And my edition of Heart of Darkness had like 70 pages in it. And everyone else was saying theirs was so much longer. And I started getting kind of worried because it's kind of a weird edition because Heart of Darkness is public domain and it's obviously been republished by someone else. And and like, it just like the format of the book itself was really weird. And so I was getting concerned that maybe it wasn't all of Heart of Darkness or it wasn't published correctly. So I ended up picking up this one. I love the cover and it was $2. So I don't feel too bad about it. But now I will know that I am reading the right version of the heart of darkness that I am supposed to be reading with my Patreon in February. And then I also got Bottolino by Umberto. Is it Echo or Eco? I've heard it both ways. I sound like Sean Spencer when I say that, but I have heard different people pronounce it differently. So I don't know how it's actually pronounced. I actually haven't read any of his books yet, but I am getting ready to read The Name of the Rose in September with a couple of friends. And I also own Foucault's Pendulum. And so I saw this and it was $2.50. It's a hardcover. It's in like brand new condition. So I decided to pick it up. It sounds interesting too, because it's set in 1204 in Constantinople. And that just sounds like a really really interesting time period that's not something I read that much about so that I'm really excited about. And the last classic book that I got is Isaac Denison. This is Out of Africa and Shadows on the Grass. So it's two of her books. I've heard great things about Out of Africa. And then Dia in our Patreon Live that I just mentioned shared her favorite thing that she read in January and it was Babette's Feast by the same author. So I'm really intrigued by her and I really want to give her a try. I don't know if since they're in the same bind up, if Out of Africa and Shadows on the Grass actually go together. Because the description on the back just talks about how she left Denmark and sailed for East Africa to get married. And then they had a coffee plantation in Kenya. And it talks about her managing this plantation, it says from 1914 to 1931, even after she and her husband had separated. And that's the only description on the back. So I'm wondering if these are like interconnected in some way. Okay, moving on, I have some nonfiction. And speaking of Isaac Dennison, I found Letters from Africa, and this is from 1914 to 1931, which is the same time period mentioned on the back of Out of Africa. So these are actual letters from her. This was 25 cents. And I was like, why not for 25 cents? And it's funny because at McKay's, I also got The Habit of Being, which is a collection of Flannery O'Connor's letters. I got that at the same bookstore for 25 cents. So, and it had multiple stickers on it. So it hadn't sold. I'd been there for a really long time. So I'm really excited that I got to bring it home for such a great price. Also for 25 cents is The Opposite of Fate by Amy Tan. I really like Amy Tan. I've read a couple of her historical fictions, The Joylet Club and The Kitchen God's Wife. I love them both. She has just a, such a great 
perspective on multi-generational Chinese families, especially when like the parents were Chinese immigrants and then their connection or lack of connection to their children who are growing up as American citizens with Chinese parents. And it's just a really interesting the way she examines family and relationship and almost this clash of cultures that's happening. And so this is, I think, her memoir of her growing up as a Chinese American. And it just, it sounds really, really interesting. And again, 25 cents. So I was thrilled. I think this is my last nonfiction. I got The Blue Tattoo, The Life of Olive Oatman. And so this is a book that a friend of mine who is a homeschool mom friend, she has recommended this book to me before. This is a book about a woman, Olive Oatman, who as a young girl, I think she was like traveling west and westward expansion with her family and she was actually kidnapped from her family by Native Americans and that's like thus the blue tattoo there and so she becomes assimilated into their culture and I don't know if this story is fully about her just staying assimilated in their culture or if then she goes back to her family because when I read News of the World by Paulette Giles that was something that was really interesting about that book was like the fact that these children who were taken by Native Americans or ended up with Native Americans in some way, once they had been with them, even for short amounts of time, regardless of the age of the children, they were never able to fully assimilate back into white culture. And that is just like really interesting to me. So I don't know if she stayed with whatever Native American tribe she ended up with or if she came back into white culture and just can really adjust that well, or I'm not really sure what the story is fully, but I've heard really great things about this book. Though I have one historical fiction and it was recommended to me by Dia because apparently this whole book haul is very Dia influenced, which I guess is not a surprise. I feel like Dia and Christy influence a lot of my book buying decisions because we have very similar tastes and so I trust their opinions. But that is Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. And she read this recently and she kind of went into it with some apprehensions and she just loved it and said it was such a beautiful story. This is like in brand new condition, a hardcover, and it's only a dollar because they had a ton of them. So I'm excited to give this a try at some point. All the rest of the books that I have here are middle grade, most of them are ones that my daughter did ask for, but some of them are ones that I was really excited to pick up. So my daughter has really been enjoying Andrew Clement's books. Uh, we started out by reading Frindle in school at some point, and then she has just gotten a bunch of his books over time as we found them at thrift stores and stuff and so she found some yesterday so she ended up with things not seen which she is reading and she has like the lid of a drink as a bookmark <laughs> and then lunch money and extra credit so those are the three andrew clements books that she got she also really loves Catherine Lasky. She has read, she has a book series about owls called Guardians of Kahul, which I think they might've made a movie out of. And then she also has a series about horses called Horses of the Dawn. And then she has a historical fiction series called Tangled in Time, where the girl goes back to, I think like Henry VIII's time period. And so we found another historical fiction of hers there that also has to do with, I think kind of like time travel kind of a thing, but it has to do with the Underground Railroad and that is True North. And I haven't heard of this before, but it sounded so good. And I already know Claire really likes Catherine Lasky a lot. So I may kind of screen it because I can't tell by the cover or by the description if this leans a little bit more YA in terms of intensity. So we'll just, we'll kind of see where that one lands. We also got a Cornelia Funk. I love Cornelia Funk. I love Inkheart. And I read this book to Claire when she was little. I'm like probably like four years ago. And that's Igrain the Brave. And this is shorter for sure than Inkheart. And it definitely is geared towards a slightly younger audience, but it was just as fun for me to read as an adult. It's got illustrations. So it's about this young girl, Igrain, and her parents are magicians. And they have like these magic books that sing that help them cast spells. And Igrain is supposed to be learning to be a magician, but she doesn't want to be a magician. She wants to be a knight. 
and she's kind of grappling with those two things and then someone comes and besieges their castle where they live to try to get these magic books from her parents and her parents have accidentally turned themselves into pigs. So Igraine has to go on this big huge adventure to try to find the things that they need to turn themselves back to humans and save them. My daughter also really loves the Story Thieves series and this was her favorite one there and we found it and it's actually like a pick your own adventure kind of setting for it and she thought that was so fun. It was her favorite one that she's read from this series so we picked this one up. We also picked up Starry River of the Sky by Grace Lynn. This is the third book in her series. The first one is Where the Mountain Meets the Moon and then we have the second one which is something about like where the sea is turned to silver or something like that. So this is the third one. I still haven't gone on to the second one, but I love Graceland's writing. I think it's so beautiful. So I picked this one up. And the very last book that I ended up getting was Hans Brinker or the Silver Skates. I've heard a lot about this. I don't know if Claire's like too old to enjoy it, if it's geared more for a younger crowd, but it was only 25 cents. It's like I said, a children's classic and it's about this young boy and his sister and they love to skate and they have wooden skates and they've always wanted metal skates, but their parents can't afford it. And there's a skating competition and if one of them wins, then they'll win the silver skates. And so it just sounds so wholesome and fun. Well, that is my haul from my case. As you can see, we made out like bandits and had a great time and it was really fun. I'm really glad that I went. I didn't end up spending very much money because my case gave me so much store credit, which was amazing. So I ended up coming back with a lot of books considering how much I got rid of. I came back with a lot more books than I intended but the cool thing is, is I got rid of those books and made room on my shelves. So I have room for more books that I will hopefully enjoy. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you have read any of these, let me know what your thoughts were. If there's any that you think I should prioritize or think that I will definitely love, please be sure to let me know. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content for me. And I will see you again next time.